Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I am so excited. This room has so much um, exciting energy in it. Um, I remember when I was sitting in this room a long time ago. Um, I was nervous. Maybe you guys aren't, but I was. So I'm going to ask you a few questions that I wish the person speaking at my orientation asked, OK? First question is, who here is from New York City? OK, wow. So we've got a lot of people who are not from New York City. All right, second thing I want to ask, um, please raise your hand if you know the middle name of the person sitting to your left. OK. <laughs> So that's four of you. No, you can't. No, you can't ask now. All right. So really quickly, if you are not one of the four people, turn to the person on your left and ask them their first and middle name. All right. Now, one name, you guys. All right. Now, wow. OK. Um, raise your hand if you know the person to your left's middle name. Nice work. OK. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read this thing that I wrote. Um, I was asked to read about my experience. Is there a way we can make this like a little taller for you? I was asked to write about my experience um, at Lang and to write about who I am and what I do today and how it relates to everything that I learned here at Lang. And that was really hard. So um, what I wrote is going to be broken up into two um, areas. I'm first going to talk about being a student at Lang um, because it was such a wonderful, enriching experience. Um, and I just think it could maybe be helpful to hear about that. And then um, I'm going to talk about what I do now. OK. So I remember sitting in a room like this years ago, looking around to find people who looked like me, who dressed like me, looking around to see who I thought would be my friend. And at that point, we didn't have cell phones. So when you didn't know anybody, you just kind of had to sit there looking ahead. And it was really awkward. But I remember looking at all the people who were, looked different than me and thinking like, wow, I, I don't know these people, but we're all in this together. Um, and that was kind of exciting. I came to Lang from New York City. I was born and raised here. Um, but it felt like a world away. I had attended public school, first grade through 12th. Um, and I really struggled with school. I really struggled with academics. Um, in high school, um, I went to night school. I went to summer school. Um, I had a really hard time. Uh, eventually, I went to a very small alternative high school uh, where I ended up starting to suspect that I was smart enough to go to college. Um, and yet and still, when I got to that school, they said, you're not ready. And they left me back. So I started Lang at 19 years old. And I started it with a very rocky relationship to school, to writing, to success. But I was here pretty much by the skin of my teeth. I pretty much begged to get into Lang. I took a single non-matriculated course as a test drive. And it was hard. It was really hard. But after that single class, I was hooked. There was something that happened to me in that class that effectively changed the way I felt about school. And I went on through the next few years at Lang and took classes with the most amazing professors. And the courses went on to change me and change the way that I felt about the world. And so I tell you that I struggled with that first class, right? And this is why. I struggled because it was small. We sat around a table and we talked to one another. 
we looked each other dead in the eyes. And I was so accustomed to working with students who looked just like me. But here we were in this small room looking at each other and we were talking about issues of difference. We were talking about race and gender and culture and nationality and sexual orientation. And we were talking about our feelings about those things across a very small table with strangers. It was terrifying. So I felt a lot of pressure to feel the right things. I felt a lot of pressure to say the right things, to speak eloquently, to have answers to the hard questions. For each class, I struggled with theories and critiques and concepts many times I had no familiarity with whatsoever. We talked about Marx and Fanon. I was intimidated by these names and these concepts, but the professors I studied with were really thoughtful and caring and approachable. And when I didn't understand something that I thought I should have known, I told them in an email or I told them after class. And I still remember each and every professor I had. Before I came here, I looked at my transcripts and I remember every single teacher I had, which is kind of incredible considering I was here for a little bit longer than four years. Um, they all had an impact on me. And you guys are new, but in a while you'll have this great opportunity to take courses outside of Lang. I took classes at what was called the graduate faculty is now called the New School for Social Research. Um, and it was so cool. I was like taking classes with adults. Um, <laughs> I remember I took a, a journalism course taught by a, a, a local newspaper columnist, which was a big deal in, back in the day when people wrote and read newspapers. Um, I took a psychology course and like another student right next to me was a, a family court judge. And we were both like being tested and I don't know, it's just kind of cool to be uh, a student with people with very different lives and experiences. Uh, and so not only did these classes give me like these really new, interesting ideas and concepts to wrestle with, most significantly, they gave me new language. New language with which to talk about people and places and history and ideas. And as I said, the learning that I got here was not limited to the classroom. Oop, excuse me, I didn't say that. Not yet. Um, the language gave me new frameworks to talk about things, old ideas. Most things that I felt certain about were now new again. And there was a common thread to all the things that I learned at Lang. I learned, and this is still with me, I learned to consider people first, and that the context and the environment of people, actions matter. People's context and their environments are important to consider. And as you can probably tell, in my opinion, Lang is a wonderful institution, but the experience of Lang doesn't exist solely in these buildings. The full Lang experience relies equally on its partner, and its partner, you guys, is New York City. The city became a lab for the things that I was learning in the classroom. For me, it was in the city where those ideas from the texts and the classroom discussions and the ideas about people and the ways of being and culture was tested and was challenged. So for those of you new to the city, I say welcome. And while I was in school, which may be the case for many of you, I had to work uh, through various periods of my time. And I'm telling you, it was hard, but it, it really enriched the, the experience of being a student here at Lang. And I did all kinds of work. I worked at a coffee shop. 
I worked uh, at an after school program in Harlem. I bartended, I worked security, I was a production assistant. And as you can imagine, these jobs took me all over the city. And in each of these jobs, I took the open-mindedness and the critical thought I was developing to the workplace. And they enriched both my relationships with coworkers and sometimes made accepting the status quo of work challenging. But eventually, I settled on a very cool job just a few blocks from here, working at the help desk of the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Community Center. I ended up there for eight years. Um, but I worked at the front desk, greeting people who had nowhere else to go and feel safe. And when I did that job, I carried the consciousness that people come first and context matters every day. Every person who walked through the community center doors had a story larger than what I would have guessed. I learned that here. An example. I developed the awareness of this people first and context, ma context matters ideas uh, for most of my courses. But an example of it that I can recall is from an anthropology class I took when the professor asked us to walk into a diner in Chinatown and sit down and order something. And then spend time observing the environment and thinking about what this is like for people who are local patrons. Not what this is like for me as a stranger who doesn't know and has never been here, but observe people who are coming in here with regularity and who feel like this is a, a place they're familiar with. In another course, I learned how to perform ethnography, or as we called it, field research, and was directed by my professor to learn how to approach and interview strangers on the street, and I tell you, as a native New Yorker, that was a real challenge for me. The classes at Lang took me outside of my comfort zone, often. It was hard, but when I got through them, I had changed. And sometimes I used to get them, I used the, the, Lang, the Lang courses to get more comfortable with the world outside of school. At one point, I fell in love with poetry. I was like all about it, the, the whole poetry lifestyle. And I spent hours and hours sitting in poetry cafes, like feeling fabulous, <laughs> drinking lattes. <laughs> I like, I loved it. So then I took a, a number of courses, um, poetry courses at Lang, so that I could learn to be a better poet when I was like out on the weekends. So I would um, workshop these poems in class and then I'd go up like 11.30 at night in a poetry cafe and test them. Um, and I was horrible, like I was <laughs> horrible, right? But, but, but I loved it and, and the, I remember the professors that I had um, really just encouraged me to keep working at it. Um, and most of the professors I had at Lang, I learned the importance of finding my voice. Um, my voice, other people's voices, and most significantly voices that are rarely, rarely if ever heard. And that is a skill that continues to serve me now as an attorney. As I've said, the learning was not limited to the classroom, but so much continued on back at the dorms. How many of you guys were living in a dorm? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I lived with my parents in New York, and for a while I commuted, but I found a way to end up at the dorm still. Um, because that's where I found that most of uh, some of the most challenging conflicts that we were having in the classroom were actually hashed out. Um, and so once I moved into the dorms, I had roommates of all backgrounds. Um, and these people I'm about to list, I'm still very good friends with. Um, one person from the suburbs of Mentecha, New Jersey. She now has a PhD and she's working in public health. One from 
um, right outside of Detroit, is now a public high school English teacher in the South Bronx. One uh, a singer from Finland is now a successful jazz musician. And um, my best, best roommate, who uh, we started out not agreeing in class ever, uh, ended up living together. Um, she's a political activist working in LA. Um, but back then, they were just my roommates, right? They were just people that I came home to to complain about, like toilet paper, the readings in class, assignments, um, and these classroom conflicts that would arise. Um, but they, they were the ones, those were the friendships, those were the relationships where d difference between us challenged me far more than the, the ideas in the classroom. My Lang roommates were also a part of this unique educational experience, so we knew that confronting difference wasn't a deal breaker. We were still friends, but we were committed, steeped in learning these new ideas and sometimes rethinking old ones we knew we were in this together and we got through it. All right, so hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But who knows how I really would have framed any of these things a week after graduating. But I'll tell you this, one thing I was aware of then was that there was something special happening here at Lang. I always knew that. By the end of the first semester, I felt like I was part of this really special experience um, in this city I had lived in in my whole life. I was excited by what was happening in the classroom, and I was inspired to change, to engage the world outside of it, to change it, and to learn from it. And after I graduated, I wanted to go further. I had figured out who I was at Lang. I was committed to people, I was committed to justice, and I wanted to engage the world with that dedication. So, I went on, I enrolled in a master's program at Columbia, where I studied uh, African American studies, um, and it was very different than Lang in, in many ways, but I brought the skills that I had learned from here, there, um, and learned a lot, didn't make the connections and the friendships that I had made here, uh, which I realized is a necessary part of um, really internalizing what I was learning. Um, I ended up becoming very curious about the, pris the prison system, uh, international prisons in particular. I ended up writing a thesis, uh, which was a comparison of South Africa and the United States histories of mass incarceration and the development of prison, uh, private prison industries. Um, I wanted to give a voice um, to the human rights violations of prisoners here and abroad. So I got a job working at Human Rights Watch, running a prisoner mail program. Um, but then I started to have a desire to do more than just write about things. So I applied to law school. I attended CUNY Law, known for producing public interest lawyers. There I interned on Rikers Island, at the Innocence Project in New Orleans, at the Bronx Defenders, and in my last year I ended uh, up joining the Criminal Defense Clinic and I became um, interested in representing men and women charged with crimes. I loved what I did. I worked at the Legal Aid Society in Brooklyn, but I became very frustrated with the fact that many of my clients were being held in jail on very small amounts of bail for offenses that one, they hadn't been convicted of, and two, for misdemeanor charges that in my mind were undeserving in jail. So I left that job. I started working for a criminal justice agency. I started running a bail program there. I was an administrator. I missed people. I missed representation of individuals. So I returned to the world of public defense where I currently work. So I stand up here wearing this 
being a lawyer. Um, but um, I'm a public defender, which in my mind is a little different. Um, I work as a public defender in Newark, New Jersey. I have over 100 clients. Most of my clients are charged with very serious felony offenses, and dozens and dozens of them are in jail right now. I spend each week going to court with them. I go to the jail and visit and meet with them and talk to them about their cases. I prep for trial. I try their cases. I spend most of my time with people who have never had the opportunities that I had and that we all in this room have. Most of my clients didn't graduate high school. A tiny fraction of them have done some college and it's clear to me that their inability to access work has everything to do with why they are in the position they are in. And as was just said, I love my clients, I really do. Some criminal defense lawyers work from the standpoint that the, the job of a criminal defense attorney is to defend the constitutional rights of our clients, to ensure that the police and prosecutors are doing their job. That is an important point of departure for some lawyers but it is not mine. I do this work because of the curiosity, the politics of social justice, and the commitment to engage others that I developed here at Eugene Lang College. Every time I stand up next to my client, I think about the person first and the context from which they've emerged. And every time I have the privilege to speak for one of my clients, because they're not allowed to, right? This is how it goes. I'm here, my clients are here, and I speak on their behalf. Every time I speak on their behalf, I try and step into their shoes and speak from their position. Inspired by what I learned by sitting in that diner in Chinatown to look at old things with new eyes, to use new language, to communicate old ideas, to locate and frame the humanity of each of my clients in the eyes and ears of prosecutors and judges. People first. Beyond the office, I've engaged the current movement, the current social justice movement, um, by traveling to Ferguson and St. Louis several times within the last year as part of the Black Lives Matter contingent. I, um, I continue to fight against injustice from the standpoint that people come first and context is everything. And I am grateful and I am indebted to what Lang has given to Lang for what it has given me. The self-esteem, the excitement for learning, the tools to uncover large swaths of the world not readily apparent, and a foundation for loving people who are different than myself. These qualities that have wholly informed who I am continue to shape my approach to the world. So incoming class. You know best, you, you really do. You know best that we are living in a time when people first approaches have to be insisted upon and fought for daily, tooth and nail. We live in a time when we must insist on the right for some people to just live. It is a revolutionary act to be curious about other people. It is a revolutionary act to engage difference and to question what you've taught to believe. And for that reason, I believe you are all incredibly lucky to be here at this moment. What an exciting time. I encourage you not only to take courses about subjects that are unknown to you, but to go out and engage that city. There is so much happening out there. Go explore it and come back to the classroom and share it with your colleagues. Because in my mind, there is absolutely nothing richer than making meaning of the world together. And that's what you guys will do here at Lang. I wish you the best of luck. And I offer one word of advice. It is a wonderful journey, but sometimes it's hard. 
Lang is full of support. It really is. I urge you to take advantage of it for one reason, and that's because everyone here is rooting for you. Thank you.